Hey everybody, welcome back to our neck of the woods. So in today's video, before we get back to drywalling, we gotta take care of a little bird issue. So hang tight and I'll tell you what's going on. So again, before we get back to the drywalling, which appears to be doing okay, uh, obviously it hasn't fallen off from last night. Um, there is a little bit of rippling going on, which is bound to happen with a first time drywaller. So I'll tell you why that's happening and how we're gonna fix it. But uh, really today we've got to focus on this bird problem. I've probably taken down 10 nests or so from robins that keep getting up here. Uh, into the soffits and they've even restarted within like an hour. You can tell they just keep packing in mud and dirt and I wanna get that out of there. And uh, the uh, twigs and stuff that they're leaving up there, it's just gonna end up like molding and rotting up there. So we gotta get going on just putting those soffits up. Now I can't put these soffits up by myself. These things are 16 foot long, so a little hard for me to handle. So I'm probably gonna cut them down to like eight to 10 foot. That'll be a little bit easier. Uh, that way I can be in the middle and push them up and get them kind of started and screwed in. And then uh, we'll go ahead and hopefully get done with that for today. Now, I did purchase the uh, window screen that I was talking about. These come in three foot by, uh, I think seven foot. And uh, it's just cheap stuff. They've got some more expensive screens out there, but I don't have to worry about UV, like breaking it down or anything because they're up under the soffits on the back side of these. So um, nothing's gonna break it down and it's not metal which I'm not really worried about. Nothing's gonna try and really get through the soffit hole and chew and eat through that LP Smart siding, which is treated with wax and borax. So um, uh, I'm not worried about this being like more of a vinyl as opposed to a metal. Um, I am going to not cut them out individually because as you can see, those soffit spots are really close together. So it doesn't make sense to make like a hundred of them. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it down to the width of those all the way down and then lay out the seven feet at a time, like five inches wide or whatever, and then just glue them all down real quick. So I'm gonna get to cutting one real quick. We'll turn it over, we'll glue it down, and then we'll go from there. All right, so the difficult part of this is gonna be that I fact that I've gotta cut it three times. So we've already got it cut down to the eight foot or like 95 and a half inches. So it falls halfway on one of those studs up there or the two by fours that are running front to back. And then we've gotta rip cut it down. Those are 24 inches wide, but where we've got that front piece of trim, obviously that's not gonna fit in there. So we've gotta cut about two and an eighth of an inch off of there. So that way it can stick up in between the outside trim and against the wall of the house. And then we have to hit it pretty precise to hit where the soffits are gonna go. So wish me luck, I'm gonna rip cut it down first. Um, and then we'll try and figure out where the pot light is and then we'll go from there. That's the first panel. We're gonna let that set up a little bit before we get up there and move that panel too much because I don't want the uh, caulking to like crack or break or move off those screens. But that's pretty much it. Um, you're just gluing it down all the way around and pushing it down in there so that it makes contact with the 
Smart side makes contact with the screen and kind of pushes up through and we should be good to go. I'm being attacked by bees, hold on. All right, so again, we'll give that a few minutes. We'll go up there, pop it up, see how it fits and then we'll nail it down and hopefully we're done. All right, it's a little windy. I don't have the mic on, so I apologize, but it almost fits like a glove. Uh, there's a little bit of cracks up in here, which is actually uh, probably what LP wants. They want that expansion joint. So we'll go ahead and fill all of this with caulking all the way down there along that trim. And then up here against the house, there's a gap too, but that's fine because once the siding runs up here, a trim piece will go all the way across here. So we can put that trim up there, caulk in between the soffit and the trim, the trim and the siding. So this will all be closed in. And then as you can see, that light fits tight as a glove and there is a gasket in there. So it kind of helps with bugs getting up in there. If I really wanted to, since these pretty much last forever, I could silicone it and then push it up and kind of glue it on there. And then one day just peel it off. But uh, we'll worry about that later. But that should definitely help with bugs not being able to get up anywhere in here, there, there, through the uh, slits, or pretty much in the light. And then later we'll have to paint all of this. We still have to caulk down around here on that drip edge, and then we should be good to go. All right, let's get cracking at the other three or four pieces, and we'll finish this side up. Oh, and uh, real quick, since this is kind of like a learning channel, soffit venting does go to the outside so furthest out that you can go like towards the gutters uh till a few months ago till i even bought this stuff i didn't even have a clue so make sure if you're about ready to do soffits uh if unless they're all perforated like with that plastic stuff from front to back if you're buying this stuff make sure that the venting is out to the outside towards the gutter don't put it towards the inside of the house well crap i didn't get any of that on film uh Forgot to hit the button and then Aaron was helping me out and uh, we were trying to get it done together. Um, it's kind of hard to put those panels up again by yourself even at like eight feet or so because they're kind of bendy on the end. So like this first panel I had trouble getting up where I put a screw in the middle, the uh, end bent down and then when I went over to the end, I couldn't put it up because it went too far this way and then bent down and then wouldn't go up. So uh, what we did real quick is I took an end Aaron took this 12 footer right here and held up her end. That way I could get it snug in there, get it screwed up and she's continued to hold her end. So then I'd move the ladder over to her side, put a screw up in there and then we were done. But as you can see, this side is now all completely buttoned up. Uh, the lights are on, the caulking is all done, which let's keep in mind that just took like an hour or two to move the ladder inch by inch and do two beads on the uh, piece of trim there that has a bead going up against the front fascia and then the bead where the soffit meets the trim. So two trim uh, or two beads there plus all of the uh, nail holes and everything. So it just took forever to caulk it. But again, this side 100% done. The only thing I did not caulk against the zip uh, board here and the soffit is because again, we're putting like a piece of trim up there. So that'll go up there and stick up against that and then that will get caulked uh, on along the side so no need to do it twice and really nothing's gonna get up in there right now because if you look at all of the nail holes uh, along there they're probably a foot across or a foot spaced out from each other maybe sometimes even less and because of that um, that soffit's really pushed up in that two by that's running across the house so there's no chance for a bug to push down and get in between there so not really worried about it for the time being 
so I will get back to probably the other side tomorrow um, it's not too late yet but there's a few things that I need to finish up but uh, at least this side again is done we don't have to worry about bugs we don't have to worry about birds and uh, we'll just finish out hopefully the other side tomorrow and uh, then we don't have to worry about this we can get back to the inside of the garage hey everybody welcome back for another day so spring rains have finally showed up uh, it's only supposed to rain today and it rained yesterday um, it's a good thing that's kind of happening though. I wanted to hopefully get some real heavy rains to check out some more vulnerability spots. And uh, I wanted to do the soffits today, but obviously on this side of the house, well, that's not gonna happen. So obviously we need to get some gutters eventually and some vulnerability here is we need to build this soil up here so the water can drain kind of off coming this way and then drain down through the stone here and run out the driveway that way. Uh, we need more stone in here where we obviously buried the electrical line and we'll bring the stone up in thickness over in here too where it's not, uh, that was kind of excavated again too when we put in the line. And we're gonna need 57 uh, stone throughout all over in the driveway because we're still kind of in a construction driveway right now. So the more 57 we bring up, the water will still be there, but it'll be hidden under all of a few inches of rock. So you actually won't be able to see that water is uh, standing until it can leak down through everything. But uh, we know we've got some spots up here. Today, what I was mostly concerned about is how good is our ice and water shield actually holding up? It's supposed to self seal around all nail holes. And when we put that ice and water shield up onto the roof, uh, obviously it, um, was in the middle of winter, so we didn't have the sticky membrane able to be uh, stuck down to the sheathing of the roof. So we had to use those button cap nails. But um, again, the ice and water shield states that it's supposed to self seal around all the nails, which again is why we use the ice and water shield over the entire roof, which normally you don't do. Normally you only put down a paper synthetic for under metal roofing. Uh, on your sheathing, but a paper synthetic paper can't self seal around nail holes. So we'd be having a, a thousand nail leaks right now where every nail would drip down through, we would have a leak. So we spent more money to protect our investment um, by using the ice and water shield, which is a real thick, heavy tar paper over everything but it looks like it's working. There's only one spot of probably 2,000 nails that I used that's actually leaking. And that's that little water spot right there, which is leaking from a nail right there that actually ended up hitting um, one of the H clips at the seams. So that's not bad. If I can locate that button cap nail on the outside, which is basically right in line with the corner of that window, I can go and cut a piece of zip tape, put it over that button cap nail, roll it down, and then I can't believe it. I can't believe that this roof and that ice and water shield is actually standing up to a thousand puncture holes and it is 100%, 99% uh, well, waterproof right now. That's crazy. Now, obviously we still got water issues. Uh, the wind always blows in from the west. So the water is coming in, hitting our Tyvek, leaking down around here, but it's not a lot because we do have an overhang, which is helping protect us when the wind's not blowing. So right now it's just running off down there because you can hear none of this paper is moving. So the wind's very low right now, but it does come in a little bit, so it does leak. Not a problem, it will dry out, but there is one other spot that I noticed uh, that's actually a problem. The outlet pipe for the sump pump is soaking wet all the way around it and getting the concrete wet over here. So what's going on is obviously you can see standing water down there right now because we've got a river flowing down through here and water is just 100% sitting on top of that pipe. What worries me about that is the rubber wall and the rubber wall mastic around that pipe are obviously not doing their job. So we need to excavate that a little bit on a dry day. Uh, obviously we need to get the mud out of there, build this up with stone so that water can actually drain down there and not sit on top of mud. It can just go right through the stone and get down to the French drain but with the, the mud being tracked down through that waterfall there, 
it's building a mud layer up and again water's not punching down through that so it's backing up and going into that uh connection point uh onto that pipe so that's not good that, that's not good for the rubber wall and uh that's not good for the, the mud to be coming down there but as soon as we get this excavated and we put this pipe in the line again we need to reseal that with either some more rubber wall or some mastic or some maybe another type of caulking dig out all of the mud that we can so it's 100 percent stone and then we'll bring back the fabric here to go over top of that so again you're not bringing mud in the fabric will stop the mud in the water will help more sit up in here but then obviously grading is going to help that too we need to grade away and grade the front of that corner there so that it's not coming down but uh, I did not know about that, so that is a brand new fresh spot that whether water is sitting there or not, that uh, pipe obviously needs to be more sealed than it already is. Hey everybody feels like I haven't talked in I don't think I have I don't think I have made a video or talked in like four or five days so this is crazy we've gone this long but uh, I want to update you guys real quick on what's going on um, there's some good things and some bad things so hold on real quick all right so the first good thing is um, I went ahead and fixed a whole bunch of water issues so I think I already talked about it in this video like I said it's been a few days so I apologize if I'm repeating myself but uh, I found water spots leaking and stuff like that and I tried to fix it. So the first thing was that nail hole out of like 2000 nails out of everything on the roof. I went ahead and found that one right in front of that window on the porch uh, two days ago, put some zip tape over it and uh, there's absolutely no leaking. And today it was raining hard. I mean, crazy, crazy monsoon hard. And uh, the subfloor in there where it was dripping before that indicated that something was going on up above 100% dry. So first one, checked, off, we're good, everything's great. The next two spots where uh, water was coming in, again, where the well is gonna be coming in, I've got a bag on the inside of the basement kind of taped up around there and mud kept flowing down in there. And every day when it rains, I just keep digging the mud out, getting back to the stone. So that way mud's not sitting on there. And in fact, I'll go over there and show you right now. But 
Um, the, the other spot, obviously, was the uh, sump pump going out there. Mud was also filling up around there. But let me show you that real quick before we get over here. So to start off, I un started undigging down there too, but unfortunately it didn't work too well because I ended up putting some dirt over in here and kind of started grading this corner a little bit. So that way the only water that can shoot down there now is basically on this hill. Water no longer is filling up down around here and making a, a, a huge river going right there. We kind of tapered it away and graded it away. So the, the roof water basically isn't adding to that and then adding to that. But again, as you can see, it's still collapsed, brought a whole bunch of mud down there, and we're still getting a little bit of water in there. The only thing is I'm not actually 100% sure if water is coming through the rubber wall on the outside and bringing it in. Um, everything on the inside of the basement that's either a piece of pipe or where I've got the hot and cold uh, water pipes going through, uh, the ICF over on that side going out to the garage, they're absolutely soaking wet. I think it's condensation actually. So that may not actually be a leak down there because those copper pipes that I have um, on the inside of the basement again, those are for using on the outside. So they have the shutoff valve like 12 inches inward versus we're out in the garage. Um, you actually have the handle to turn them off. So that way if the garage ever freezes and I don't have the heat turned on, I don't have a pipe burst out there. there the, again, the, the shutoff valve is on the inside of the pipe, but those copper pipes are absolutely just dripping, soaking wet with water. So I don't think it's a leak from up here, uh, getting down like on the inside of that wall where the outside garage and the house meet. I don't think water's getting down there and running down. I think it's just condensation. So that may have been what was going on over there that the pipe was so wet. But back to this over here, what we have a problem with, and I knew this was gonna happen. We did our damnedest to seal this three inch pipe going from the road all the way back here. Now, the trench guy set his trencher to a certain depth and just went the entire way. So if he went 30 inches down, let's say, if your entire property tapers like this, you're still set at 30 inches, well, all of the water is gonna hit in that trench and go downhill. And then even when you come back this way from around the RV or through where I went through the uh, driveway, water's still gonna wanna come wherever you're going downhill. Again, we did our damnedest to seal and glue this three inch conduit, but water still got in the three inch conduit. Now, my father-in-law says there's no ifs, ands, or buts. Water is gonna get in the conduit. You're not gonna be able to keep it out. Whether it be condensation or whatnot, it's gonna get in. Unfortunately, what happened today is on the inside of the basement, it's got a huge puddle of water. And I figured it was coming in like it always does through the well inlet. But as you can see, the mud is still kind of not filled up that area yet. So there's no way water could have gotten in there. The water was actually pouring into the basement through the three inch conduit. Even though that conduit right there is running uphill, that three inch conduit is so full of water that it was back filling up and then falling out. So unfortunately I had to uh, remove the rubber coupling, disconnect it, and just allow all of that water to pour out. So we've got to figure out how, with that coupling removed right now, how the heck are we going to get stuff into that pipe and completely seal it? Or are we going to have to come in from the inside of the house and push stuff through to seal it that way? Now, the well driller said when they put their one inch or one inch and a half line through that piece of conduit, when they get it into the house on the inside of the conduit to the outside of their uh, pipe or uh, PEX pipe that they're going to use, they say they just shove bentonite clay in there. And once the bentonite clay hits moisture, it expands and will completely seal that hole. So I guess I'm going to ask them to try and shove it into the three inch also out here at that connection and maybe even from the inside of the house we shove it back out that way and just completely seal that hole because we obviously can't have that pipe continually always filling up with water and then bringing it into the house. That's gonna be a major, major problem. But hopefully that will also kind of stop the more this clay settles and the clay packs down around that three inch pipe. Um, if there's a gap in the three inch uh, 
where water's coming down through the clay and then there's like a pocket where water's sitting and then water's flowing into the pipe where whatever connection point we had that just for whatever reason is not glued 100 percent and is not 100 percent watertight um the more rain we get the more it'll compact and uh, settle and then water won't be getting in there into the pipe as fast and obviously grading is going to help one day gutters are going to help one day but that just really sucks that that totally 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 bummed me out today that we were starting to do stuff and i stepped down in the basement and i just see all of that water down there that is just such a heartbreaking thing to see especially when we're talking about a three inch piece of pipe that could carry some major serious water if it ever wanted to rush in and flood this basement from that spot so apologize for the echo real quick um so we should be okay i think over there i think it's just condensation for the sump pump the well is looking okay, but again, we've got this water issue over here now. But the reason why today is supposed to be a happy day is because my father-in-law came over here and we hooked up the entire electrical panel. As water can no longer come into the basement anymore because uh, that coupling is disconnected and from the outside of the ICF over to that coupling where it's separated, it is sitting downhill so water can't now come into the house as long as that coupling is disconnected so what we have right now is uh we've got power obviously out at the street the main breaker is on we've got a uh, arc fault breaker here on which is feeding this g uh, fci outlet here which you can see the green light is on we need to get another one just for a regular one i don't know why we need four outlets here but it's just easier to do that especially with the metal plates uh, but we've got power guys um, the only thing that we didn't get is apparently we forgot a 100 amp breaker um, the breaker or the the panel out in the garage has its own 100 amp breaker but we need a hundred amp in here to feed the wires that are going out to the garage so it'll be 100 amp in here 100 amp out there it's just the way that it has to be but um, Apparently we didn't buy one or we can't find it anywhere. But as soon as we get that connected to here, we'll go ahead and connect the two powers and the garage then will have 100% power and we should be good to go there too. And then after that, we can start figuring out what we're gonna do uh, with all of our wires on the inside of the house, how we're gonna do all of our outlets and where our switches are gonna go. We've already started planning that out, so that will be in an upcoming video. But there's one more thing that I wanna show you guys real quick or talk about real quick. Obviously, we got this whole side done over here with the soffits, but we also started picking our paint and actually starting to paint. The only thing is I started doing it with a brush and I quickly said, this sucks. And I don't wanna use this with a brush anymore. So we've got our black color going on. Hopefully in the daytime, you'll be able to see that a little bit better. But uh, I got the whole outside fascia on this painted, the under part of the trim painted, and then we just need to do the bottom of the soffits and get those painted and finish it out. But um, we ended up going and buying a paint sprayer instead. So we went to Home Depot and basically I ended up getting the most powerful one that they have. Unfortunately, this Graco is still not powerful enough and not the Graco that I need to spray the rubber wall. That can only spray a maximum tip diameter, I believe of 0.21 or 0.021 inches. And for the rubber wall, we need like a 0 .030. And that paint sprayer is like $3,000. But this one here is powerful enough that it'll spray any stain or exterior paint, which is usually a lot thicker than interior paint. Um, it was only about $670 with the correct tip that I needed for exterior paint, jumped it up to about 700. But the way I figure it is that sprayer right there can do the entire outside of the house depending on what siding we go with, if we either get it already pre-painted from the manufacturer or if we just go with like what we went with uh, uh, the LP Smart siding there where it's already kind of um, 
uh, primered with that brown color. But that paint sprayer, again, can do the entire outside of the house and the entire inside of the house. So that's gonna be a thousand times easier to use a brush and a roller. And uh, when we're done with it, maybe we'll end up selling it. But again, 700 bucks, it's the most expensive one that they had, but I think that's gonna be a heck of a lot easier for us to finish the inside and the outside and not have to rent anything because that uh, seven uh, or that three thousand dollar one that I rented for the rubber wall, that thing was a hundred dollars a day. So just having this uh, a sprayer of that caliber for a week, it's already paid for itself. So why wouldn't you just have it uh, already in your possession? Again, a little bit different. That probably would have been a little bit cheaper to rent, not a hundred a day because it's only a seven hundred dollar sprayer, as opposed to the one that's three thousand dollars retail and they're charging a hundred dollars a day. So. Uh, but hopefully if this weather clears up and we get some days, the next video will end up uh, painting all of the soffits over here and the backside. We will start working on um, the inside again, getting some drywall done or uh, finishing out uh, running the electric, figuring out where all that's going to go. But until then, um, we just got to kind of have to wait and go by with what the weather's giving us. So uh, I'm going to wrap this video up here though, guys. I uh, wanted just to get something out to you for this week and show you what updates we got going on and unfortunately again it's i want to be so happy that we have a power in the house but i i just can't stand water i can't stand leaks and having that issue in the future and it's just really depressing because that's a lot of time and money to try and fix stuff like that unfortunately but hopefully there's an easy solution i'll stay positive for that and then we'll go from there so until then hope you guys liked the video like subscribe as always hit us up in the comment section if you guys got any questions or hit us up at neck of the woods 2020 on instagram if you need to personal message us but until then we will see you guys next time and i hope you all take care